Howdy y'all and welcome back to Apron Strings. Um, it's been a day or two, hadn't it? It's just a lot of stuff still going on. My uh, workers still haven't finished everything and it's hard for me to film with people in the house with me in and out. And I still don't have my strength back from the flu or whatever it was I had. I never spend my time sitting around looking at a magazine or looking on my iPad unless it's bedtime. And I haven't had any energy and I apologize but there's nothing I can do about it. I am a whole lot better. I don't have the congestion, the cough and all of that. I just don't have any get up and go. It just got up and went. But today I'm going to make a pot of broccoli cheese soup and I did this a long time ago and y'all might have watched the video. But just so I can be in the kitchen with you, and some of you new wonderful subscribers may not have seen the uh, process, there used to be a restaurant at Humble called the Black Eyed Pea. And my favorite thing to get down there was their squash casserole, which I make, and their broccoli cheese soup. And this is their recipe that came out in the Houston Chronicle, and I cut it out many years ago and laminated it. Now what I'm going to do today is double it, so when y'all get the recipe card at the end of the video, um, it'll be for half as much, but we're going to double it because I'm going to feed the guys that are here. The room that was my daughter's bedroom that I took in for a sewing room, since I added the sewing room on the back, closed in the screen porch, they're painting that room today and putting can lights instead of the fluorescents that we had in the ceiling. So they're getting it uh, done today, so I'm going to feed, it's cold here, so I'm going to, it's going to get colder. It's going to be down in the 20s at night by the end of the week. Hope it don't repeat February two years ago, but it's going to be cold. So anyway, we're going to have soup today. So I'm going to make twice the recipe of the broccoli cheese soup. And it calls for, um, so I'm using four cups of water and four cups of half and half. And I'm gonna get that good and hot because I'm not doing it in a double boiler. You know, I do everything, pie fillings and all, in the microwave, don't have to worry about it scorching. So I'm gonna get this hot, and I'm gonna add my cornstarch slurry to it, and thicken it, and then I'll add the cheese in there, and the salt and pepper and all, when the cheese is melted, we'll add the broccoli, and we'll have our soup about ready to go. So I'm going to get, I've already measured out four cups of water and uh, four cups of half and half. And I'm going to get that really good and hot so that it'll thicken when I put the cornstarch in it. And then, once that thickens, I'm going to cut my cheese up and put it in there. And I think it's salt and pepper and I'll have to look at the recipe and see. I'm sure I'm going to add some onion and garlic powder. And then at last, we'll add our broccoli to it. But I'm going to get this hot in the microwave, and we'll go on with the recipe here in a minute. Okay, I've got my water here and my uh, cornstarch, and it's a half a cup of each, but of course I doubled it. And when you first start stirring it, it's like it's not going to mix if you hadn't used it before. But just keep working with it and stirring it, and it'll all dissolve, and you'll just have a slurry to put in to thicken. And I like using cornstarch. Uh, if you're doing something and you want a more clear broth, use cornstarch. Flour makes it uh, cloudy, creamy looking. And cornstarch dissolves better. Uh, in the hot, put it in the hot and it doesn't take it long till it's thickened and ready to go. This is thick because I, I don't have quite as much water as it called for because I would rather have more of my half and half flavor in there. It's about done. Yeah, it's just thick. It's not lumpy, so see? See, it's, it's dissolved good. So as soon as this gets hot enough, we'll put it in there and stir it. And I'll let y'all watch me do that and uh, it'll thicken that milk and we'll put in the salt and pepper and get our cheese in there. It doesn't, doesn't take long to bring it together and it feeds people and it makes them feel good and happy because they got good soup to eat. 
Now you can add more broccoli than it calls for. I don't have enough broccoli to double it, but I'm just going to put it in there anyway. It calls for a pound and a half, so that would be three pounds. Well, I only have two pounds, but I'm going to use that and play like I had plenty, and we're going to enjoy it. So the microwave's dinging at me, so let me see if it's hot. And if it is, we'll be putting the cornstarch in. My liquid isn't quite hot enough yet to put the cornstarch in, but I'm gonna, I've already done half of it. I'm going to go ahead and cut up the rest of the Velveeta. Y'all, I have a recipe for making homemade Velveeta, and I'm going to try it. Because I know some of y'all can't get Velveeta where you live, and I make a lot of recipes that call for it. And the homemade version is made with uh, American cheese. So I think everybody can get the just plain American cheese, maybe. But I usually divide this in three or four pieces and then cut it in little, little hunks to put it in there. That way it melts quicker. That's rocket science, y'all. Rocket science. Two years ago when it got so cold in February, Troy was in the hospital in Houston and I had to keep the water pipes dripping and and my neighbors came and helped me wrap pipes. We only had one pipe to burst. And so I told them, I said, y'all, I don't know what's done and what's not done and I don't know what to do and what not to do. And uh, the neighbor that came and helped me wrap last year or two years ago, I just happened to run into him in town. He said he'd come over and help me. So I guess he'll come one day this week and we'll wrap the... I know where the water hydrants are, but I don't know if they're all wrapped or not. we got to check them. So anyway, let me get the the thickener over there in the, the milk pro, uh, stuff, milk and water. And I've got onion powder. I went ahead and added a tablespoon of onion powder and a teaspoon of garlic powder. You knew I would. And then the, the salt and pepper that it calls for in the recipe. And of course, I'm doubling. So I'm going to get the thickener in and get that thickened and then add the cheese to it. And then we'll put the broccoli in. Okay. It's hot enough that I can go ahead and add my slurry. Okay, close it back up. I love my roll-out microwave. And I'm going to set it for about two minutes, and then we'll check it. Yeah, that's thickening real good. I'm going to let it thicken just a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and add in the salt and pepper. be easier to stir it into this than when the cheese gets in. Get it all incorporated real good. Okay, let me cook it another minute or two and uh, be back shortly. Okay, let me open it up. Yeah. You have to remember that your cheese is salty. So if you taste of your um, white sauce and it doesn't taste salty enough, the cheese has quite a bit of salt in it. So it's going to add some salt to your recipe. wipe under it, but at least all the cheese will all be in here. Y'all, this soup is so good. And it's sure going to taste good to me today while it's cold outside. I got the fireplace going. I'm trying. We have blowers on the fireplace. It was a unit that we put in when we built the house. And I'm trying to use the fireplace instead of the heat 
for the cut down on the electricity. Okay, I'm going to do that for three minutes and then we'll come back and stir it. <laughs> okay, it got, it's about melted, so I'm just stirring it till it's all blended well. Then I'll add in the broccoli and this will be ready. Doesn't that look yummy? Mmm. I think it's all pretty well melted. I'm going to go ahead and put the broccoli in it and let it heat a little bit more. Okay, got my broccoli in and I took my snips and snipped it some. It'll, it'll come apart. But I didn't have as much as it called for, so I like to try to stretch it. I may have to cut it some more here directly. I'm going to let it heat up real good and then We'll do a taste test of it. Hey y'all, I've got a big old bowl, big old bowl of broccoli cheese soup ready. And I'm fixing to call the guys in here to eat. I've got, I didn't make cornbread. I've got crackers on the table and they're, um, they're good napkin, you know, those paper towel kind, bounty. And there's spoons waiting on them and the tea's made and they're ready to uh, come and eat. I found the neatest little thing. I don't know if I showed y'all. Let me get it and show you. Especially when uh, the workers have been here, I go through a lot of glasses and I use the red plastic throwaways, but I found this little thing on Amazon. Your cups fit in here. Your pen to write their name on their cup is to the side. And it says, mark your cup and drink up. And this is neat to have on the counter when you're going to have a lot of company. It keeps it organized and they can mark their cup and fix their tea. So they'll have to fix their tea. My grandson got me a Yeti ice bucket for Christmas. And of course it's red. Little Richard surprised me. And uh, so I've got it full of ice waiting on them. And then Lauren came in and she had found me a red Stanley cup. Shouldn't have spent that money, but they did. But I love it. Of course, it's red. That makes me love it. But uh, I'm enjoying having that ice bucket in here because I, it keeps the ice, and I can go out to the ice machine and fill it and last all day long. So their ice and tea is waiting, and their cups are going to be waiting, and they can get ready to eat right here to mean it. I had to get me a taste of this soup instead of waiting on them guys to get here. They're back there. They're putting can lights in the ceiling instead of Troy had just put those rectangle fluorescent lights around in there where it would be bright enough for me to sew. So they took those down and they're putting the can lights in. It's going to look a lot nicer. It's also messy. So I guess they're going to try to finish all that before they come in here. Maybe they'll dust off before they get here because it's got ceiling junk on them. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. I love this soup. Man, I love it. It's wonderful. Y'all need to make you some. It'll warm your soul on a cold day. I really am going to try to get back in the groove. I tell y'all this every time. I hope you believe in me and know that I'm really trying. Um, I need to because I need to make money. And I need to because I need my friends. Y'all have been so sweet to email me and check on me. I got a bunch of Christmas cards. I thank y'all so much for thinking about me and the sweet words that you wrote in them meant a whole lot to me. Christmas was different. Life is different. But I'm looking forward to things getting better in 2024. I know if I do my part, the good Lord will do His. So I'm going to try to just get up and walk and go and do and get back to normal. The main thing I've had to battle with since that week before Christmas is I haven't felt well. First I had COVID and then I got whatever that was. I'm assuming it was the flu. Um, it's just left me very lethargic and no energy. But as far as fever, coughing, headaches, all that's gone and I'm thankful. So maybe I'll see y'all again this week uh, with something really good. A friend texted me a wonderful new recipe and I want to get it made because I want to eat some of it. So hopefully that'll be in the next couple of days. I'll have that up for you. And then I'll tell you who gave me the recipe. Y'all have a wonderful day. And if you're where it's going to be cold, 
Take care of your pipes and get you some blankets ready to wrap up and get wood on your porch for your fireplace if you got one. And get ready to just hunker down and enjoy the cool spell. It won't last long here. They're saying a week or two. It's a long time in Texas for it to be down in the 20s at night. That's very unusual for us. Now, I haven't even put my plants up yet this year because they're on the south side of the house on the front porch. And it's gotten down to 31 and it hadn't hurt them. They're just as pretty and green as they've ever been. But I will have to bring them in this time. So I'll be doing that toward the end of the week. And that front porch is going to look bare and naked. But that's okay. My plants will be safe. Y'all take care of yourself. Make time for your family. Put your phones aside and make some memories. I'm so thankful that Troy and I would sit down at the dinner table together and, and visit. We didn't have phones there to distract us. We talked and we shared. And uh, that's how I like for it to be. And that's how y'all need to do. You need to make some memories because you don't ever know when that's the last memory you'll get to make. So put your phones up. Look people in the eye, talk to them, teach those young'uns some social skills, how to, how to interact and mingle with people and visit. It's the only way you're going to know anything about what's going on in their world because they're not very likely to text you something. So try to override that phone and, and have some one-on-one -on -one with them. The good Lord bless and keep y'all. I hope I can be back in a couple of days with that recipe because I'm dying to taste of it and I want to share it. I'll see y'all ASAP.